Dirk Barbecue. This is a special night with uh, Dirk probably getting ready to pass the wheel on the all time scoring list. What has Dirk meant to you during your time here in Dallas? Listen, I mean, I really don't want to talk about this until it happens. You know, I, I just think it would be bad luck. Um, but since you ask, <laughs> uh, you know, you know, I don't know. I, I there's so many things that that uh, come to mind um, with him. Uh, he's such a unique athlete. Um, you know, like every day I see what he's gone through the last, not just this year, but really the last three years. Um, to be able to get on the court to compete. And uh, this has been a, an amazing set of challenging circumstances. You know, it was a couple years ago, it was the Achilles. Um, and then, you know, this year it was the, uh, uh, it was the recovery from the foot surgery, which was, you know, much longer than expected. Um, I mean, if you, if you, could see the things that they are sticking in his body, uh, from needles to everything else, um, all over it. <laughs> you know, just to, just to be able to to get out there and play. I mean, you'd be absolutely amazed. And so, uh, part of part of me is just really uh, more than ever just in awe of um, his will to compete. Um, and then, you know, I mean, when, he, when he jumped back out on the court in the Phoenix game in December, you know, uh, with no training camp, I mean, what a tough, what a tough challenging situation that was. Because out there gets the ball and hits his first shot, you know. And ever since then, it's just, he's just been, you know, he's just been, uh, he's kept a tight jaw and he's just fought and fought and fought. And, you know, he's had some really terrific games. If you th take all that stuff into consideration, um, and then uh, so you know he's he, he's right there, and this is a you know this is the kind of historical thing that uh, is really if you follow the game for five decades the way I have um, is this is mind-boggling, it really is. So. Um, Really, those of us that know him know that he's one of the really special people that you'd ever meet in any walk of life, um, in, in any profession, in any circumstance. Um, and to, 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 to have had the, the privilege, you know, myself 11 years, some of you much longer, um, you know, it was amazing. Rick, in a, in a way to ask you something about Dirk that maybe he hasn't been asked this way before, oh, here. Sorry. And I'm just watching the guy relieving in the back. <laughs> in, in, in a way to ask something that hasn't been asked before, you know, during the game Saturday night, obviously when things were happening in the fourth quarter, the arena was buzzing. And, and you're in the trenches during the game, and I'm not sure how much you're able to pay attention to that. But wondering if you if you have a sense of uh, the joy people get still watching him compete, the level of adoration that exists amongst fans here that wanted to see it happen Saturday or buzzing about the prospect of it happening tonight. Just kind of wondering if, if you have a sense and a perspective and a am I aware? realization of that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely I am aware. Um, you know, it's, it's been a, a two decade plus love affair, you know, with, a, with really a symbolic and iconic figure. You know, when you, when you look at everything that, uh, that Dirk has done on the floor and off the floor, and um, and some of the the challenging things that he's he's worked through. So, uh, I, I understand the the feeling. You know, I was I I played with you know some some great players. You know, I was I played with Bird in Boston. You know, for three years when he was the best player on the planet. Um, you know, I played with Patrick Ewing in New York for a year, and and he was a you know an, an up and coming. MVP caliber player, you know, and uh, you know, people just uh, people have a, a great 
um, connection to their superstar athletes, especially the ones that um, that they can relate to. You know, and Dirk, Dirk, Dirk has allowed us to relate to him in some very unusual and special ways because of the person that he is. And so, you know, look, this is, um, yeah, it's, it, it's really hard to put so many different things into one or two sentences with him um, because it has been so long and there have been so many things uh, that are unforgettable. You said you don't want to think it's a good idea to talk about it until it happens, but you can't tell me to jinx a guy who only needs four points, can you? <laughs> Next question. Piece <laughs> <laughs> of phrase mind boggling, and I assume you're alluding to Wilt himself. Uh, as somebody who's been in the game as long as you have, and uh, probably remember the tail end of his career, yeah. it's mind boggling to me that, he, that he's kind of fallen out of the goat conversation. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, how would you put? How would you describe his impact on the game? Well. At one time, he was my favorite player, you know, in the early, early 70s. Um, you know, I was a kid growing up in northern New York State. Um, we, we didn't have cable TV to watch the ABC Game of the Week on Sundays, so we drove into town, which was, you know, a five, ten minute drive to a friend of ours to, to watch, and you know, he was a guy that, that I was just simply in awe of. Um, and back in those days, I, you know, I followed the NBA and grew to love the NBA through through magazines. Mostly, there was no, obviously, no internet. Uh, we had limited um, exposure with TV. I, you know, we had t where I live, we we're so close to Canada. We had two Canadian stations and a CBS affiliate. Affiliate. So, um, you know, I got plenty of hockey night in Canada, um, two nights a week, which was great. And you know, I grew up and. Became a big Montreal Canadiens fan and, and watched the Maple Leafs a lot too, um, but you know, Will was just one of those larger than life guys that, that did virtually everything there was to do on the basketball court. I mean, he led the league in assists one year. One year he scored 50 points a game. Um, there were, I think, one or two seasons where he averaged over 20 rebounds and maybe more. Um, and he he was constantly you know, resetting the bar of things that, that could be accomplished by, by uh, an individual guy. And, and, in, and along the way, you know, he won two championships with two of the most dominant teams in history, with uh, Philadelphia in 67 and then the Lakers in 72. And so, um, you know, and I, I, another thing that I remember very vividly was that when he passed um, several years ago, you know, uh, I remember seeing Bill Russell's reaction to it, um, and it was extremely emotional. And uh, you know, those two, those two had really pushed each other to uh, to level, levels of um, of greatness that you know were were just uh, amazing to even consider. Uh, you know, Russell with all the championships, and Will with championships and MVPs and individual accomplishments and. And some of the statistical things that just you know today, if you th if you think about them, um, are just beyond belief. And he averaged 50.4 points per game one season. Uh, one season he played more than 48 minutes a game because he played some overtime. So he never left the floor. Uh, so there there were just many things, uh, many things, and and so that's you know that's that's the part of this that that gets me along with you know how I, how I feel about Dirk. Do you think we'll ever see that again, Rick? Players playing every minute of every Averaging game. 50 a game? <laughs> no, I haven't. Playing every minute of every game. That will come out. I don't. I don't. No. Rick, what was your perception of Dirk uh, before 2008? Mine? Um, I mean, he was a perennial all-star and a great player and, and uh, you know, a, a guy that I, I had really felt at that point in time, it, it redefined the power forward position for sure. Um, and you know, I I watched this 2006 series of Miami very closely, um, and I knew how close they had been. 
and uh, and how painful that was. And um, so, you know, uh, when I got here in th in 2008, you know, we we uh, we were fortunate to make some really critical moves to put the team in position and then get on a historic run, you know, at the at the exact right time. Um, and you know, he had everything to do with that. That's that I was presenting. Well, let's assume <laughs> let's assume that I do already. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what I'm wondering is is it is it interesting is it speaks something to basketball that two players can approach the game in different ways on the court and how they handle themselves and now they're in the same echelon uh, there's the same tier, they've, they've reached kind of the same accomplish, uh, accomplishments. Does that speak something to how, you know, basketball, there, there isn't one way to do it, but that people can shine in their own different ways and in, in their own different paths? Absolutely. Yeah, and if you look at history and, you know, to, um, I don't know, Brad, if you were the one that just mentioned it about, you know, the fact that Will's name doesn't come up that much, you know, when people talk about greatest of all time, and um, and it, it just it speaks to uh, the importance of identifying eras, and it also, you know, speaks to the fact that, you know, over time as the game evolves, you know, players evolve, um, and Dirk Dirk is, you know, one of one of his real legacies is going to be the way that he has helped this game evolve. To what it is today, uh, you know, in the in the '90s and early 2000s, there was a real crisis. You know, scoring was down, and um, it was, you know, people in, in you know, in, in the decision making uh, positions were trying to figure out what to do. Um, but the way Dirk approached the game, the way that Nelly converted him from a from a three to a to a four. Help nudge the game along, open up space. Um, eventually, you know the the value of the three point shot to open up space became a reality, and and so the game today now is you know the, you don't hear anybody talking about how there's not enough scoring um, or it's not exciting or any of those kinds of things. Um, so anyway, I, I'm not sure where I am with your question, but yeah, I mean all of these guys. Um, have some kind of distinctly different path, method, methodology, or you know, personality characteristic that has 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 defined them in a special way. Um, one of the special things about Dirk is that he's he's a guy that's never looked for attention and never really wanted to be in the spotlight, other than to serve his teammates, fans. Um, and certainly ownership, because he and Mark have a really special relationship. So, um, there you go. Luca was listed as probable. Is Who? Luca. Is he going to play? <coughs> yes, I believe so. For younger fans. Um, this is the subject of Bruce Ward's second favorite player, Maxi. has been a bump in rebounding lately. What's your perspective on the, on the uptick in production we've seen out of him over the last week or two? Well, I think it's consistent with him feeling a little better health-wise. He's been a bit banged up. Yeah. Uh, he had the knee that was um, a little swollen because he got it banged, you know, 10, 12 days ago. Had to kind of nurse him back in. Um, get, getting him feeling better is going to help him play better for sure. Thank you, guys.